Okay, so second section. What is Venus doing this week? All right, so Venus on Tuesday night is doing her Venus square Jupiter opposing Hydrea. All right, so reading from the notes. We have been re-evaluating our love relationships and our creative passions while she has been traveling and retrograding in the Leo. While Jupiter has been hanging out in Venus's sign of Taurus has been giving us a new understanding about money, things of value and our self-worth. All right, so when these two square, when these two squares of which would normally cause tension, the fact that they're both benefic planet means that they're likely going to eventually be a positive outcome. Okay, I did actually write that. I didn't obviously proofread it, but... <laughs> But we have, we have the beneficial planets, all right? So um, now, uh, now the moon's in Scorpio. So I know this morning that I was saying, if there is, so Jupiter is, uh, uh, oh, Jupiter is also the judicial system, all right? Jupiter rules Sagittarius, which is the courts and also all that sort of stuff. Venus in, um, um, Venus is, in Libra is, you know, is also the court system. But in this case, if you are having talks with people about money, then this is actually a really, really good time um, to be speaking to people if you have some sort of, um, what's the word? Um, when, you, when you have, um, when you have to go into talks with people for the courts. Oh, a mediation. All right, so this is great times for mediation and um, conversations about money. Oh, my God. Sorry, guys. Lost my words. All right. Okay, reading on. Okay, so we may see conflicts between our desires for things and our need to be more careful with our finances. Okay, so have you been refraining from frivolous purchases in the last week? All right, so the, as this square to Jupiter is getting closer and closer. Have you been um, have you been stopping the frivolous spending? I know in the last couple of weeks I have been talking about it because I too have been making dumbass purchases. Um, and I know in the last week I have been questioning myself and saying no more. All right. Now, um, okay, what else? Maybe you have reevaluated your budgets or actually thought more about your savings goals. All right. Jupiter in Tor Taurus just wants more money. Uranus in Taurus is offering us different ways of making more money, but it's also asking us to, you know, have alternative views on different things. You know, man, Jupiter in Taurus, I wonder if that would also look like indulgences in, um, I mean, Jupiter indulges in everything and Taurus is also a very indulgent place. Venus is very indulgent. Leo is very indulgent. So I wonder, you know, just that, just sort of just thought about that right now, um, especially in regards to the Scorpio moon, which causes our fears to want to have that escapism and the um, the self-satisfaction, self-soothing through different main through different means so you know these things okay hang on am i recording i am recording yes alicia thank you again i am oh hang on that was your last question <laughs> i put stuff in carts and i get a discount code then i might buy it but i've done a lot of window shopping and forget it. oh good rachel good all right. Excellent. Yeah, I know I, oops, shit. I know that I have been questioning all of my purchases. Even today when I went shopping, I was like, no, don't need that. Don't need that. So this might get a lot easier than us buying dumb shit. All right. Okay. So streamlined your payment system and got rid of any unnecessary bills. Um, I know Daniel this week, um, got rid of a few things um, just because I was suggesting it, you know, great time to be redoing those budgets, working out how to minimize your payments so that you can stretch them out. Perfect time to be doing it. You've got this, uh, this astute 
um, logical brain happening with, you know, all of the, wait, wait till the sun's in Virgo and it's just going to be so much easier to do those type of things. All right. And social calendar a bit much is probably easier to say, thanks for the invite, but I'm busy. All right. So saying no, it might be a whole lot easier as well. All right. So, uh, and I've already said that if you have any fire and initial sentiments going, the Scorpio moon could be a great time to sort discussions that end in a better situation. All right. Okay. So in addition to the square to Jupiter, we have Venus opposing Hojea. Stop the things that are not good for you. Full stop, all right? Um, Aquarius wants freedom. Hygieia is our well-being. Venus in Leo just is so out there and wanting to do all the things um, that, you know, sometimes she can just get really, really tired. In addition to Mars, our planet of vitality, being opposing Neptune and having all of his strength zapped out of us, um, you know, uh, what did I say? We need to find balance in our self-expression and our overall well-being because it's not great for your mental health to be constantly finding ways to amend your true self. The last couple of weeks, we have talked lots and lots about being authentic and just being your weird ass self or, you know, just if you've if you've ever held your tongue or you know, not dress the way you want to dress. Just stop that shit and do you do you because, you know, there is no one like you. You are important and you are valuable and, and you know, your lessons will end up teaching other people valuable things as well. Okay. So now another one. Yay. On Tuesday, Venus emerges in the dawn sky as the morning star. So if you are an early riser and you have an unhindered view of the horizon at dawn, then get outside and, and have a look as Venus coming up as the morning star. She'll be, she'll be just in front of the sun. So you'll have to get there quickly, but that will be a very, you know, it's, it's a really nice thing to watch. All right, so some associations with this phase include, um, um, okay, so she comes back as radiant and the light bringer, which in Christianity is Lucifer. So she is in her Lucifer morning star. If anybody watched the show Lucifer, there we go, Lucifer morning star. So she is rebellious. You know, it is a time of hope and renewal and, you know, just getting out there and doing things and being ballsy. So she's had her realization she comes out after this period of being unseen and she's much more enthusiastic all right so now uh venus will make no aspects at all you know so once she finishes this opposition to hygiea which is wednesday the 23rd she makes no other aspects until 5 p.m. on the 31st where she starts her opposition to hygiea again because Hygie is still moving at the same pace and Venus is slowing down. So, you know, she's finished her opposition, but then she slows down and then Hygie is retrograde. So it goes into that opposition again. So if you are going, if you are starting any new things or you are trying out a new way of being due to you knowing what your well-being needs, then you're going to have very quickly a way to try and then try again, all right? So it's it's not a one and done type thing. You very, very quickly get another chance to either try and go, yay, I did it, or try and then try again and reassess or, you know, try something different, all right? Did just say that twice, but there you go. All right, so um, it, it gives us a time to focus on the Mercury uh the all like all of the other stuff so rather than all of the hard work that we've been doing let it go for a couple of days same with mars we can just have a rest mars is making no um aspects either so this is this is a good time this is a good thing all right we've got other things to concentrate on none of them being our heart or you know forging ahead just fucking calm down all right now sunday night Mars is moving into Libra, which is Venus's sign. So for most of the time that Mars is in Le in Libra, he is going to be ruled by either Venus retrograde. So he will likely, oh, here we go. 
I wonder if this is the case. So if you've been working out stuff with men in the last couple of weeks and then Mars moves into Libra, which is ruled by Venus retrograde up until the 9th of September and then Venus in shadow up until the 7th of October, then he moves into then he moves into Scorpio on the 13th of October. So there's only going to be six days where Mars is moved, is ruled by a normal functional Venus. So that's amazing. So this whole trip of Mars in Libra, like I said, I wonder if the men that we've been working shit out with will turn and be totally on board. Like, you know what I mean? Mars in Libra is all about diplomacy and, you know, let me find my words. Mars in Libra. Okay, we've got diplomatic, charming, although indecisive. He's a peacemaker and a people pleaser. He's cooperative and justice seeking. So, uh, but he's also a bit of bit passive aggressive and conflict avoidant. So I wonder if all of the relationship work, because once Venus is in shadow and she is going to be reviewing all of the relationship work she's done, Mars in Libra, I wonder if all that stuff will come up again for like that, that third hit. So just keep an, keep an eye out for that or just keep your consideration that you may have to talk about the same shit again, but Venus will have the upper hand. So, all right. Can you, are you not hearing me, Claudine? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. Sweet. Okay. So, um, yeah. And like I said here, watch out for Mars when he moves into Scorpio because he has been in a detrimental place since fucking August last year. So, uh, when he was when he went retrograde in Gemini, he has been not great for that long. So when he moves into Scorpio on the thirteenth of October, that is going to be a ripper. It's going to be we're just gonna, it's going to be so interesting. Okay, all right, I'm going to stop, stop, stop recording.